Welcome everyone to Barstool Backstage. I'm Ben Mintz and excited to be joined in the studio by the bassist for Revolution, Marley Williams, getting ready for a show tonight at Pier 17, a gorgeous venue. And first of all, Marley, welcome to Barstool. How are you? I'm feeling good. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And like you said, yeah, the show is going to be a fun, beautiful venue. Yeah. So y'all have been back out on the road I believe this is the Good Vibes Tour. Absolutely. Started in early August. You know, obviously the long break from COVID. Uh, how, how's transitioning back to the road going for you guys? Oh, it's so cool. Everybody's, you know, obviously really hungry for live music and, you know, just be coming together for one, dancing, singing, laughing, just getting a little bit of uh, normalcy, even though there's still some challenges going on out there. How, how did did the COVID break uh, give y'all more of an appreciation for getting back out on the road? I know y'all been going hard, I believe, for 15 years. Yeah, y'all have had a ton of success. Y'all are known as a live band, and just did, how did that break affect you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think everything in life, you know, when something gets taken away from you and you get time to meditate on things, you always gotta, you know, try to use it for the best way and not the worst way and not getting a rut or anything. And I think. Um, you know, the band, and I know for sure myself, it just a lot of reflection and like, you know, when you, you know, have something taken away, you're like, when I get that back someday, I'm going to really appreciate it more. And so that's kind of what's going on. And I, I think that's going on for a lot of people, you know, around the whole world. So are you from Miami? No, I'm born and raised in NorCal, like okay. deep in the Redwood Forest. But, but you then, live uh, in Miami now? Yeah, I live in Miami now. I uh, moved there six months ago. Lived in San Diego the previous eight years. Okay, so that so makes I've been more in, sense. I've been in California, Cali. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that's like your brand, Hill Kid. So I'm familiar right, with right. that that you created. Yep. What, can you give us like the backstory on that? So like the Yeah, I mean, um, hippie kid raised off the grid um, and small town and... Uh, we, we, we called each other hill kids when we were growing up because we were just you know running around the hills making forts and doing all kinds of crazy stuff in the woods. And then um, when revolution started coming to fruition, you know, I just, I was always kind of like a, kind of a leader and mover and a shaker. And I was like, well, I kind of want to have a, a brand. And so hill kid represents art, athletics, and nature. It was kind of a lifestyle brand because I played a little college ball, grew up in the woods, and now I play music. So I wanted, uh, you know, a brand that kind of was an umbrella for people who incorporate art, athletics, and nature, not just, oh, I'm an artist. Oh, I'm a skater. Oh, I'm a b baseball player. You know, it's like a little you, can, bit you can do it all. You can write poetry and hit the gym, you know. like so you play ball, <laughs> yeah. you play, play football? I didn't. I actually had uh, a rare hip surgery that's found in Samoan kids. Okay. And so it ha I grew too fast. And so pin in the hip. I was like, nah, I don't think football's for me. So we got Ben, big Saints fan from Louisiana. Yeah. You got any sports teams? Niners, or? all day long. Niners. Niners. Forever. We've, uh, we've had some, y'all have taken, y'all have got the best of us <laughs> through the years. Still a little salty Talking about, about that, that 2011 playoff game. <laughs> yeah. um, it's shoot. only 10 years later. We're yeah, running yeah, Davis yeah. at like 200 yards. Yeah, yeah. there's some there are some shootouts for sure. You know, well, I want to ask, uh, so y'all came out with a new album during the mm -hmm. pandemic. I went back into the studio and – you know, how did that go? And just did the did the COVID break kind of inspire the new music? Yeah, I mean, again, I think that, you know, there's there's extra time. I mean, for some people and for a lot of people there was. And our lead singer really did a great job of just out of nowhere, just coming up with a bunch of material. And then we all, you know, tried to, you know, uh, pitch in and, 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 you know, compliment what he was doing. And, you know, he really... He had he had a creative flow and it was just like whoa you got all this new material okay let's let's start finishing this thing and, and adding our own little touches and stuff and following his lead. Awesome. Well, I've read I've I've got buddies that are obsessed with you in California that are huge fans and uh, they just say y'all have such a love and positivity message and that's mm -hmm. what y'all are all about. You can feel that energy at the show. Uh, what what's behind and uh, kind of got that vibe going for y'all? Yeah, I think um, music has. There's a time and place for all kinds of music. I, I respect every kind of music, and when it's played, you know, I, you know, when I'm when I go out friends with clubs or something, it's like if it's EDM, I'm like, all right, let's get weird. If it's like reggaeton, I'm like, all right, let's twist it up, you know, like, you know, trap, like, all right, some attitude. Us, barbecues, beaches, boat rides, cleaning the house, family reunions, you know, there's. There's a place for us, and I think everybody, you know, wants that. And it's it's really cool to see, 
you know, our, us take our music for that part of life. And um, it's pretty cool because, like, now we start to see, like, fans that have been fans with us for over 10 years, and they got the kids on their shoulders. And so, you know, I love all music, and I love our music, and I think that that's kind of, like, where we've evolved to is that, hey, you know, because we've been also influenced by Jamaican music, and then we grew up around, you know, the California Red Hot Chili Peppers and, you know, Rage Against the Machines oh, and Dr. Dre. So we, we try to filter in a little bit of that, too. But, like, reggae is, like, that's our that's our ground level. Like, that's where I we sprout I think the coolest off. part about, like, the genre that these guys come from and, like you said, the inspiration music of rap and all these different types is – I think the coolest part about your shows is when you have features from other artists mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter, you know, the Marley's come out or other, I know like um, Charlie Tuna, I've seen him come out with Slightly right. Stupid. I was introduced to Slightly Stupid, at, like Snoop Dogg was with them. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I see you guys do all these festivals with all different names and it just branches out and you guys can really work with, with anybody, I think. Right. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, I think reggae music has always been kind of, you know, Sometimes people call it like world music. It's you know, it's like it's a very it's a very simple music that I think everybody can relate to. You mm -hmm. know, it's like how can you not like the song "One Love" by Bob Marley? It's an anthem. It's kind of it's universal. And so then, you know, with us, we're like, well, we're not. You know, we know where reggae came from, Jamaica, and we're so like thankful for that. And that's why we collaborate with so many Jamaican artists. Like to put. Jamaican artists on our tours if they want, you know, and, um, but you can see that you can, you know, you can put, you can implement different sounds into it. And so that's why I like, you know, we're not like traditional reggae, reggae music. We're like, you know, Cali Roots is a festival now. When we first put out an EP, we actually put California reggae on our album cover on this five song EP. And then we just, we didn't really think of it, nothing of it, but all of a sudden now it's like evolved to, you know, these big festivals like everybody goes to cali roots i think red rocks would be up there as like a single show as like all the fan bases want to go to red rocks those mm -hmm. those shows are always Reggae sold out the rocks it's yeah. like two nights yeah yeah so can you talk to because i think maybe the barstool fan base our fan base not really have traveled out there to mm -hmm. bend to those definitely not cali roots i think some people been to red rocks but mm -hmm. specifically reggae on the rocks like what, what what's the different vibe when you show up at those events well um it's it's kind of like, again it's like this hybrid thing it's 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 a very new kind of subgenre I guess you could call it um, you know and it's like you know Sublime was around you know a while back slightly stupid obviously like kind of bridged it you know Pepper um, you know you had like three Elevens you know kind of and then it and then I think that the next wave was like these a lot of groups not just from California but mostly. You know, and then you got, like, Soja in D.C. and stuff. And everybody just kind of, I think that the reggae music kind of sort of slowed down a little bit in Jamaica. And then there was used to be, like, Bob Marley Fest in California at, like, Long, at the Long Beach uh, Sports Arena and the San Diego Sports Arena, all these Jamaican artists. I went to Reggae on the River my whole life up in NorCal. And all these Jamaican artists kind of slowed down a little bit, and I think there was a void, and I think a lot of people grew up around it, and then in the US started making like kind of their own version of it. And so then to answer your question, you get to these festivals and you have this like, this hybrid kind of reggae community. These like modern, like lovers of, of peace, like modern hippies or something. I don't know, it's, it's oh, that, like- That's definitely the vibe. It, you, 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 <laughs> got, you, know, you, know, it's all, you know, you got the 420 like friendly vibe. You got like people that wanna just like, it's, they wanna chill, man. People wanna chill and listen to reggae. No, or, or music too but like your fans and just the reggae rock community fans like i said before yeah. we start it's just it's the best environment to go to a show and chill everybody's welcome everybody dresses as casual as they want nobody's worried about looking this way or that way or like you don't you have you don't have influences in the wild everywhere <laughs> you know what i mean it's like hey i'm here with my bros or my girl and we are we just we want to hang out and there's there's no fights there's no like intense like uh, anxiety because I love festivals and I love that part too. Don't get it wrong. I go to Coachella's and all this and you know I go to my spots in Miami and it's intense and it's like oh there's there's this influencer and there's this and it's like it's intense but like there it's like like I was saying it's it's the potluck barbecue place for music festivals. <laughs> if that I, makes sense. I, I want to follow up. So y'all 
just touring up the road. I mean, 15 years, you've gotten to play all over the country and world, basically. Do you, do you have just a couple of your favorite venues in general? I'd like, yeah. Red Rocks is like second to none. Yeah. I like to call it the, the, you know, the Roman Coliseum of music venues. Okay. It's just something out of this world. And then after that, like, you know, there's just, I mean, the Gorge – in uh, Washington is also pretty phenomenal. That's still on my bucket list. Yeah. I made that. I only played Rocks. it once, and it was during, like, some wildfire, so it was a little eerie, but still could see how beautiful it was. But, you know, you got, like, um, you know, the Greek in um, Berkeley. Um, you know, this venue we're playing tonight is really special. It's way different because it's, like, more new and it's smaller, but it's, like, you're on a rooftop. Brooklyn Bridge is right behind you. You're like, yeah. This yeah the is Empire cool. State like, uh, yeah, building can, lights are going off yep, there and yep. stuff. It's it's amazing. So, but th- there's there's special places all around the country. But um, you know, those are some of the top ones for sure. What would be? Um, I know you guys. I think recently or a couple of years, you started doing a festival down in Jamaica, where it was like you mm-hmm. guys were kind of headlining and bringing some people down. Right. Well, I mean. That sounds fun. What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> really fun. Um, we did it for two years. Um, it's a little difficult being that far away. Visas. Um, you know, it's. I think there's sometimes there's like, you know, customs and stuff are different. And then, you know, getting to the festival. So we backed off away from that for a little bit. There's still, we might revisit it there or another place. But the concept is great. You know, it's like a destination all-inclusive hotel, you know, slightly, we're playing Slightly Stupid's, uh, you know, destination festival uh, close, close, to, the close sun. to the sun, right? Down in yeah. Mexico. So, you know, the whole thing about those is Mincy, like, we got to get down there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I hope they'll have me back in we'll Mexico. We'll play some beer pong. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's just, it's a lot to do. It's, it's hard enough to do a festival on U.S. soil, let alone, like, right. do it somewhere else, work with other people, like, Across the seas, you know, and like, and then get people to come too. And it's expensive, so you know, True. people got to afford it too. I, I want to ask you. So you said recently you moved to Miami in the last six months. It yeah. sounds like you've been a California lifer. You know, yeah. big change. What ins- what inspired the change? How's it going? Uh, I always sum it up as easy as this: personal and financial growth. There you go. Uh, every, everybody, everybody's <laughs> moving to Miami. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> the theme in this office. One of, one of our lead guys just walked out the door for the last day. He's moving to Miami. There's just, six months. There's yeah. just yeah. pockets <laughs> of New York everywhere there, man. We're, they call it with a six borough, right? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. down there. Con- convenient. He's leaving right before October starts, before the six months of winter, you know? Yeah, Can't exactly. say you see a coincidence oh, there. Exactly. <laughs> your, your publicist said that you were fans of us. Yeah. So do you ha- do you have any questions? You got three barstool people in the room. Do you have any barstool questions? I'm I'm, I'm like just the a hill ki- the hill kids a fan <laughs> of barstool. That's like shocking to me. I'm like a sports nut, okay. and uh, I also like take you know playing baseball my whole life up until brief stint in Santa Barbara, and just like you know I mean ESPN is a background thing for me, mm-hmm. whether it's the six same episodes and again it's just it's been around me i i learned how to read reading sports sections F- sf chronicle santa rosa press democrat and like my dad would get me subs- uh, subscriptions to all you know the magazines because i was a little dyslexic at first so was, and i didn't want to read any of the books but he was like sports and i was like oh yeah so sports is like really special in my heart and anybody who's involved with it like this or anywhere are friends of mine you know and I often take what's happening in sports, not just the games, but behind the scenes, and apply it to my life, whether it's my own personal life or my band, like the spirit of it, people coming together to try to have a team game and have good camaraderie and all that. And then it's like, so for me, like, you know, it's, it's <laughs> if you guys are a part of it, you're friends of mine and I'm fans, you know, it's, it's kind of like it's not specifically just Barstool, it's just the movement, you know. You, you, you kind of mentioned something early that jived a lot with Barstool's mission, where you, you talked about how you mix art and entertainment and music, mm-hmm. and that's what we believe at Barstool, too. Right. Like, the same people that like sports, like music, and like good food, and there's a way to kind of intertwine all those brands. Absolutely. Any athletes that want to come to shows, I go out of my way to, you know, roll out the invisible red carpet, and, you know, it's really cool to, um, you know, it's – comes down to people dedicating some you know their life to something and it's like i wanted to be a baseball player i love what i'm doing but then like knowing what 
you go through and, and you're on tour. If you're an athlete, you're on tour too. And then it's like everybody, even if you're not the athlete, even if you're the managers, even if you're the media, it's all the same movement and it's all working and we're all like trying to push something and we're all getting inspired and we love these stories and these headlines and, and you know, the scripts and, the, and it's live. Like yeah. if you're at home plate, don't strike out. If you're playing bass, don't mess up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everybody's looking at you, <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. And so, and that's, that's why it's so fun. And it's, that's why, you know, you don't watch a recording of a game. You want to watch it live, <laughs> you know, or be there at the stadium, you know? I'm curious. So when you're in the, do you enjoy playing live more than in the studio because of this, oh, yeah. just the organic feel of it? Absolutely. I've been to a lot of music shows in my life. I will say that the revolution crowd and the sound of you guys as a band, when the studio sounds great, live to me sounds better and I've never seen a crowd that is in tuned with you guys like literally singing every word yeah it's I, pretty I, awesome I, it's man. it's blown my mind I don't do you feel the same way definitely um we always get that you know you guys sound better live which I think is the best compliment ever because I personally like sometimes go to festivals and I'm just like let down centrally like and it, everybody's just doing tracks and, and recorded stuff there's nobody like you know i'm like whoa are we becoming like an endangered species over here like who is you know all everything that's popular people are more they don't really care if it's somebody's pressing play and then you know i'll, I'll go to some festivals and i'll see people on the mic and they're just putting the microphone out to the people and that's the recording and i'm like Right. <laughs> you missed your verse, bro. <laughs> like you know. number one, number one road trip uh, album live from Red Rocks Revolution. Yeah. The thing about doing like studio albums is, is like you get this material that's fresh, and then you think you know it, and then you record it, and you know you're like that's good enough. You don't want to touch it too much, you know. And then you're starting, is this better? And then you're like, is this, we go in the negative or the positive, adding this, and you're like, we just gotta you know live with it, put it out. Then you do those songs for two or three years later, and you evolve, and you're like, man, <laughs> we should have done this on the album, but it comes down to it. People are like, oh, we like your live show more, and you're like, yeah, well, we've had three years to work on that song live and know that this part was too long or we should have do this little breakdown or something. But, I mean, I think that's what makes it special, and, you know, you get two versions. You get the studio version and you get the live version and come out to a show and stuff, you know. Uh, well, I'm curious, just something in, in a band, when y'all are playing like a festival set versus a con your own concert, is the preparation different? Do you play different sets? Is there like with the vibe being different? I'm always just curious as a band, because I see some bands have their like festival sets yep, yep. and their concerts are like a different experience. I'm just curious where you on that. So festival sets are definitely, you know, usually only headliners are playing 90 minutes. Yeah. So then when you, for the festival, you're usually cutting back stuff and you're trying to pick your best songs and you're you know every set it's a story you know you want a big beginning big ending and then a story through to keep I mean how we like to do it it's like ups and downs and you know go through a journey a musical journey I love that. Um, and so for festivals yeah and then for touring you know you want to play your best set you also got to change it from the last time you did it. You know, you can't, like, some people just go and, I mean, I I know bands that will just, they've been playing their same set for years, and it works, but we always like to change it up a little bit, or we'll incorporate new songs from, like, this album. But it's like, once you have a really good set, and you've rehearsed it, and then you get in the groove with it, it's hard to change it if nobody's heard it, and you're playing another city where they didn't hear it, mm -hmm. you know. Maybe somebody follows you from a close mark to the next, and they're just going to have to see that same set twice. But for all the people who haven't, you want to play the best thing you have yeah, going. absolutely. So this tour, we have the same set, except for did two nights in Orange County, two nights in Red Rocks. I think it was the only back-to-back -back nights. Then we tweaked it a little bit okay. and swapped in, like, seven different songs. Okay, cool. I've always just been, I've always just been curious about that. Awesome. So we're going to wrap it up. We have a little segment called Questions from the Readers. Okay. Uh, not from us, from, from our fans and the readers. Uh, a rider 
for a revolution when you show up to the show? What, what's, what's on your guys' rider? A rider, yeah. Um, so we got a lot of organic uh, fruit and vegetables. We have some, uh, we do the juice thing. Um, so it's like, I think it's like 25 pounds of like different, you know, fruits and vegetables and just grind it out. And there's now, this do you request, do you guys bring your own juicer? We have one on the road, yeah. Like probably the V8 or something of that. I, I do the juice here and there, um, but I know some of the guys. We have a chef. Um, so, I mean, our writer has changed with a personal chef. Like now it's, you know, cut out a lot of stuff that we have to like. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a tequila man. If we're going to go down that road, <laughs> really good tequila is, is crucial. A little janting juice. Um, we got a lot of beer craft beer lovers in the band um you know just basic snacks i mean everybody's pretty on the organic healthy tip so what's good tequila for on a health kick for me (laughs) (laughs) oh the vitamin t (laughs) 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 um i've i've segued into the class azul reposado ring the bell white porcelain you know bottle with the flowers on it that's uh it's pretty good it's got a nice little toffee caramel after note there and um casa amigos is like I've heard of that. You know, that's pretty pretty standard, like, right? It's in the ballpark of that. Right. Um, used to used to like 42, but then I was like, this is a little too oaky-ish for me. It's a little too – hurts a little bit too much. Um, but then you got Don Julio 72, Clear Anejo. That always does a trick, too. Man knows his tequila, man, too. Uh, yep. Uh, I can't wait for tonight. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say it. No, Start I mean, talking I'm, about tequila. It's like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, I'm just a uh, new venue, Pier 17, which I had a chance to check yeah. out the other night. And, I mean, just unbelievable. I mean, you're literally the Brooklyn Bridge, bridge backdrop yeah. behind the stage on the East River. you got the New York skyline, the Brooklyn skyline. Mm-hmm. you got lights bouncing off the Empire State Building. Uh, man, just can't, can't wait to check it out. Yeah, it's going awesome to be great. I'm really happy you guys are cruising. All right, last question, then we'll get you out of here. We don't want to put you on the spot. Next question. But, <laughs> but, uh, best story on the road that you can tell. You've been on the road for 17 years. Um, oh man, you know best the, re- the readers story. like the readers like the juicy stuff. One that just comes to mind that I'll never just forget because it was, and it's not even like this amazing heroic tale, but there was a St. Patrick's Day in St. Pete, and. Um, you know, being Irish, I celebrated and, uh, <laughs> wait, was this a reggae rise up St. Pete it was a festival? Janus, it was a Janice landing. Oh, Janice live. All right. And, you know, obviously had a little too much fun. And I was like going back to the tour bus and I was just like tired. I'm going to just go pass out in my bunk. And on a tour bus, you have a back lounge and a front lounge and these doors and they look the same. <laughs> I am always front right tour bunk <laughs> but apparently i made it on the bus and i got to the back lounge and so when i was leaving the back lounge i'm turned around so i'm like <laughs> just go straight into the bunk bed but backwards and it's not my bunk bed <laughs> so <laughs> my keyboard player his real name is Rourke carry also irish <laughs> and um he probably comes back in from a like a long night and he goes to his his bunk and I have like all my clothes on feet on his pillow because you know we <laughs> entering from different and he's like hey man <laughs> get out of my bed I'm like take off hoser <laughs> like you know like <laughs> you've had too much to drink <laughs> leave me alone I'm trying to sleep here he's like no man for real dude you got your feet on my pillow <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> like and so that that like one for oh I always wish I like could have had that filmed and like the whole like, <laughs> the whole talk like dude no seriously I'm like dude seriously I'm sleeping in my bunk it was a, it was a St. Patrick's Day standoff of like <laughs> did you end up getting up or did you just keep sleeping he, 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 he might have just took my bunk I'm like okay. kind of on the heavier side and move, moving a bear at 4 a.m. probably not that fun <laughs> all right man that was uh. That was awesome. Thank yeah, you guys. Thank, you. thank you guys so much for coming. Yeah, thanks to uh, tomorrow. Thanks Williams. for having me, guys. Yeah, and, and hey, do you have any um, anything you want to shout out? Um, just shout out all our fans who have continued to come to our shows. Um, now they're even bringing the next generation to the shows. Um, I think uh, one thing that's important is that this are really confusing times, and there's a lot of divided people, and we got to remember that 
no matter how far we're divided or how strongly we disagree with each other, that this problem, future problems are never gonna go anywhere. We live in one house. If we can come to a revolution show and get along, I think we can do it in other places too. So let's make the small stuff work out on the bigger scale and uh, keep on listening to, to those reggae vibes. Thank <laughs> you.